Hello, I'm Lindsay Mason, the Director of Faculty Services at Ohio Dominican University, where I also teach philosophy courses using OERs and collaborative annotation tools. The purpose of these annotation assignments in my 300 level business ethics course is to work as a community toward a clear understanding of all of the required readings before getting to the point where students critically analyze the ideas in discussions and presentations. Everything in this course is totally public and community-based. That is, there's nothing that's submitted privately to a Dropbox and there are no individual quizzes. Students are able to see all of each other's work in the course. So I thought, why not make the first step of reading for understanding collaborative as well? We want to share today our successes using perusal annotations and talk a little bit about some of the other collaborative annotation tools available and give you a couple of things that we learned along the way. My name is Kelsey Squire and I'm an associate professor of English at Ohio Dominican University in Columbus, Ohio. Today I'm going to focus on my use of OERs in one of my American literature courses, specifically a 200 level survey of American literature. This class was recently held online for the first time and I used an OER plus perusal to foster engagement with course content on a weekly basis while generating class data to analyze at the end of the semester. Rather than having a one and done discussion board, students are building a repository that they draw on later in the semester. Reading books has had a powerful place in my discipline and in my personal experience. One of the challenges to using OERs in a humanities course is the sense that reading on a screen is very different from reading a physical book. Pairing an OER text with perusal can help to alleviate some of these concerns because it changes the reading experience from passive to active and from isolated to communal. Prior to selecting perusal for my class, I also did some research on other collaborative annotation options, including Hypothesis and Google Docs. The chart that you see here is made by Hypothesis and it compares their tool with Perusal. Hypothesis works well with public web pages and PDFs. And in contrast, Perusal works with PDFs, EPUBs, web pages, and text or MS Office files. You can't see this on the chart here, but Perusal does also work with videos and podcasts. The tool that will work best for faculty may depend on their OER file type. Personally, I was inspired to try Perusal after reading Perusal in Practice by Emily C. Friedman. One of the elements that I appreciated about her article was her discussion of copyright materials. Perusal is a closed system, which may make it a better choice when sharing materials that come from the university's library holdings. Prior to adopting Perusal, I also studied the assignment sheets that Danica Savonic posted to Haystack, such as Collaborative Close Reading Online. For her part, Savonic writes that I chose Google Docs because we've been using that platform all semester, and I didn't want to overwhelm students by introducing another platform. The Google Docs method could be a great option for those who already use it extensively in their classrooms and who want to focus on student annotations on specific passages. For myself, Perusal was a better tool because I wanted students to be able to annotate full texts and because I wanted something that I could integrate into our LMS. I considered using Hypothesis as well in my course, but I decided to go with Perusal for three main reasons. Stability, privacy, and the gradebook integration. In my course, I adopted the OpenStax Business Ethics textbook but I was only assigning some of the chapters, not all of them, and I was combining the textbook chapters with other articles and websites each week. Perusal allowed me to add the syllabus, individual textbook chapters, library resources, as well as internet websites, all organized by due dates, which corresponded to the weeks in the course. Uploading the documents and websites into the one Perusal library provided stability and organization to the weekly readings. 
Students click on each assigned reading or video from the LMS rather than navigating to a website, which makes perusal very similar to courseware such as McGraw-Hills Connect or Pearson's MyLabs. It seamlessly integrates with the LMS and each assigned reading can be its own access point from the LMS to perusal. Integrating perusal with the LMS provided an extra level of privacy for student work. When students click that external learning tool in the LMS, it takes them to a perusal page that looks like this. They see just the one chapter from the OpenStax text, some questions to consider before reading, and a field to begin creating their own annotations. Finally, all student annotations are auto-graded by perusal based on a customizable rubric. As an instructor, I can manually update grades before releasing them to students. With the deep integration links to the LMS content, you can also sync up all perusal grades in the LMS gradebook. This saved me a lot of time this semester. It's easy to set up a perusal account. You can just search for perusal through your favorite browser, log in and create an account. Here are my available courses. I could copy one of these courses or I could create a new course. Once you get the course set up, you can begin adding content to your library. You can just drag and drop files as well as browse the perusal catalog. You can add a web page, can materials from other courses, videos, podcasts. Once you have the item added in your library, then you can assign it with a due date, maybe some introductory questions, etc. And then you can copy it over to your LMS. It's important to provide some instructions for your students in your LMS for how to use perusal. I provided a perusal annotation assignment guide for my students. It includes a video here. I've also included the assignment description, what I expect, as well as sample substantive and non-substantive annotation, and then the weekly questions that the students can expect to see when they open up those perusal annotations. In addition to the assignment guide, I've included here for students a syllabus practice. In this case, I can click on this syllabus practice and I can see here several annotations made by students where they asked questions and I was able to answer those questions and they left comments and one student even said thank you so much for having OERs and all free textbooks in this course, which is great. One essential skill in the literature classroom is analysis. In order to help students engage with our texts, I developed a series of questions, and I encouraged students to use hashtags as a way of coding their responses. So here you can see some of the analysis questions for hashtag class and hashtag community, which were a few of the ones that we used. Here's a screenshot from Perusal. This is from an analysis of the Declaration of Independence. And on the right-hand side, you can see students and myself using the hashtags marking up the text. Perusal generates a list of all of the hashtags and allows users to see all of the comments that are marked with that specific hashtag. At the end of the semester, students were able to use both their own annotations and the collective annotations of the class to write a literary analysis paper. Students were encouraged to return to Perusal to review their favorite hashtags. This made starting a larger project less intimidating and made it easier to identify potential passages to analyze. It has been such a joy to see students engaged in reading philosophy. I want to end with a few examples. So here's an example of true peer-to-peer -peer learning. JR here provides an analogy to what the author is discussing in the required reading and two other students comment, that's a really good breakdown that helped me to understand it better, and this really does help with the understanding. They are teaching each other through these annotations. Aren't we all tired of students endlessly agreeing with one another on discussions? After eight weeks of annotations, they're finally comfortable enough to start disagreeing. Here's one student stating an opinion in the top comment, and then another chimes in, you know, I think there's some positive and negatives to this point and provides a concrete example to counter the first student. Real conversation is happening here. Finally, imagine being in a face-to-face -face classroom and asking, where do you typically get your news? You might get answers like these. 
students explaining how they get most of their news from social media. But with collaborative annotations, not only are students answering questions, they're also the ones deciding which questions to ask in the first place. It truly is learner-directed discussion. Ultimately, using OERs in my online literature class allowed students to have easy access to our course readings from the very start of the semester. Adding in collaborative annotations in combination with my OER had a transformational impact on the course, encouraging students to work together and to build off of each other in a learning community. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I believe my students were more engaged with the material and better prepared to complete all of their assignments because of these collaborative annotation tools. Feel free to reach out to myself or to Kelsey Square with any questions or if you'd like to talk about this more. And I also look forward to seeing you all in the discussion panel. Thanks.